And welcome back live to the Lancaster Classic. Chuck Cooley here with Teresa Johnson. And uh, we are at the Spooky Nook Sports Complex, the True Ball XL Archery Hall, and we are broadcasting live to you from the Win and Win Broadcast Theater. And we are super excited here to see what's going on. This is the Women's Recurve Competition, and we have got an interesting matchup here. So shooting right now is Crystal Govin. She's a former compound world number two world championship medalist, world cup medalist, who switched to recurve so that she could try for a shot at the Tokyo 2020 team. Her opponent, Sue Bach. Sue is a total dark horse in this, uh, in this competition. She is a master's division uh, competitor normally at USA Archery events, jumped into the senior division here and has just absolutely shaken up the rankings. So Crystal blows one out to the left and we know, we're not sure exactly what happened there with her shot, but Sue is pretty steady. That means Sue is going to take an early lead one point in this match. And Crystal's laughing off the nerves. Let's hear what they say. So, Crystal, you've been up here maybe before with the compound? No, this is my, uh, this is my uh, first trip to the shoot-up. It just took me switching uh, types of bow to make it up here. So how long have you been shooting the recurve? Just about a year, just over a year. This was my first recurve tournament last year. And that's really, really done well to get this far. So, Thank you. A lot of hard work. Thanks. So we're going to see some replay action here. That Sue's uh, looks like that may be her last arrow. And mm -hmm. she's, she's shaking her head a little bit there. She knew she blew that out to the eight. I want to talk about who, and there's Crystal's miss right there. I want to talk about who's in the coaches' boxes for these archers. So standing behind Crystal, we've got Roxanne Rai, and Roxanne is the head coach at Hall's Arrow, Joad, uh, also a friend of, of Crystal's and of mine, just a wonderful person, incredibly experienced tournament archer herself, former uh, U.S. team member, and I believe uh, she may have made a world team as well or two when she was competing in the uh, youth divisions. And standing behind Sue is her son, Liam Bach. So Liam is a competitor himself. He is actually coached uh, by Butch Johnson, my husband. And Sue and, and Butch are, are regulars at our, at our place, at our archery range. And we see them every couple weeks as they make the trip from Maine to Connecticut for coaching. And here we see Crystal Great opening shot up Crystal the second there. one. It's a little longer hold time for her, but that's a really solid shot. You could tell that form there, the way that elbow snapped back. She looked very, very solid there. Crystal had a pretty solid match coming into the final division here. She had to go through Gabby Bayardo uh, in her own right, who was, I think she was on this stage last year in the shoot-up. So she had a pretty yes. tough road there. Susan defeated Alicia North, 112-103, nice to make there. her way into this match. So now we've got a shot of Liam here behind Sue. And this is a really neat dynamic. Mm. You don't normally see a son coaching his mom. And that's a really nice thing to see both of these, these archers yep. uh, in this family working together. Here's Crystal. and Gives she, her a little vote of confidence there. Good little job. A little long on her timing, a little wobble in her stabilizer. But fun fact about Crystal, she tends to do better under more pressure. She has always competed that way as a compound shooter. And now as a recurve shooter, you give her more pressure, she's going to hit more. Good finish there from Susan with a 10. And this match is still one point apart, 55-56 with the advantage to Susan. Uh, where are you from? Maine. What, what town in Maine? Old Orchard Beach. Old Orchard Beach, very good. I noticed your bean boots on your quiver, the little ones, and I thought, she must be from Maine. That's wonderful. Well, welcome to Lancaster Archery Classic. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about your gear a little bit. You're shooting a uh, Hoyt GMX with uh, ILF Hoyt uh, Quattro Limbs. You're shooting a Shiboya Sight and a Win and Win Axiom Stabilizer, uh, Biter Plunger, and what tab? It's the Win and Win 360. Win and Win 360 tab, very good. And you're shooting Carbon Express Maxima Arrows, a little bit larger diameter. It helps a little bit. It does. Yes, very nice, very nice. Well, let's see what the scores are. Goodness, it's a close match. Susan has taken a one point lead, 56 to 55. And uh, so she will once again be able to choose first or second. I'll go second. She chooses second. 
So Sue has chosen to shoot second, Chuck. Why Why might she do that? You know, me personally, I would want to go first. Uh, but it, if she goes second, that means she gets to close out uh, this end with a final arrow. It puts um, a little more pressure on Crystal as well. A little more, and she can kind of see what Crystal is doing. Now, Susan has the lead. Well, she's got an answer with an 11 here because she just popped one in the center. So that'll tie this match up if it's Ooh, anything she's less. She's off her clicker a little bit. And that cost her. That's so a nine. Two-point swing on one arrow. So for the viewers at home, what we say is when we say that, you know, her, her clicker timing is off, what we mean is the clicker clicked. You can see the point of the arrow will come through the clicker, and we may see that in a subsequent camera shot. Um, maybe we can get that same shot on Sue here and watch her arrow come through the clicker. There that it is. That little so finger that comes down. There it is, the click. Yep. It clicked and she did not release. Yeah, so her timing, and, and that may be consistent for her. Some archers will shoot right after the clicker, but normally we teach, for sure in coaching, we teach that you want to be right on that clicker. Better shot of it here with Crystal. That's the kind of timing you want. Hey, you want that click, release, click, release. Now, it was an interesting move on Sue's we'll part she, to try to put she that. She does it again. And then she, see it's that creep forward. Correct. Her draw length is changing, and that changes the speed of the arrow. That could be part of the nerves of being up here, or it could be a regular thing. So now we've got a one-point match. Let's hear what they say. But it's swung in the other direction. Start to s smooth down and just relax, just like another day? <laughs> Not in the slightest. <laughs> How's it feel up here on the line surgery stage? Terrifying. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's it's kind of it's kind of designed to be that way. Uh, it's it's so entertaining. How's this compared? You've been on the world stages. You've been in archery World Cups, World Championships. How does this compare? This is a lot more fun. The interaction. The only thing I don't like is I'm afraid of heights, and this podium is making me a little nervous. It's only 14 inches. I can't stand on a step stool in my kitchen. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Take a couple of shots here at some of the replays. You can see that great form and follow through from Crystal. That was that first shot, landed solid in the 11. Now, Crystal's had an interesting year as, as Dick initially talked to her and you heard that Crystal has only been, this is her, this tournament last year was her first recurve tournament. Mm -hmm. She actually only made the switch to recurve a year ago, Crystal August, to, uh, and she's going to she's gonna choose she's to shoot, shoot first, to kind of get the pressure out of the way. Crystal tends to do, as we said earlier, she tends to do better under pressure. Now, one of the things that's interesting Looks about like Crystal is the way that she trains. Beats, so that She's really over, focused uh, on cross-training. Mm -hmm. She is She's a consummate athlete. She did cyclocross before this. She was a competitive swimmer in high school and college. I think she actually wanted to try for the Olympic team as a swimmer. Never quite got there in swimming. So for archery, this Jen. is a lifelong dream for her. She gets a little closer with that arrow that she just shot. Nice Every time. tournament she's shooting right now is experienced to try to get to those nice. Tokyo trials. Mm -hmm. I want to give a quick shout out here while we've got a minute before we get into the last end of this match. This event, the Lancaster Archery Classic, we have a ton of sponsor support that makes this happen. It's not just Rob Caulfield and the family in Lancaster Archery that makes that happen. Great shot from Crystal there at 11. Some of our gold sponsors, Competition Archery Points, Zebros Archery, Brownell, and Gillow, they help make all this happen. Of course, Teresa and I are working today from the Win and Win Archery Broadcast booth, and we are in the True Ball XL Archery Hall at Spooky Nook Sports Complex. Our platinum sponsors, Carter, SKB, Shrewd, Big Shot, BCY, Loophold. We're down to the last arrow of this match here. Let's see what she does. Ten. And a 10. This goes to Crystal. This. Great job by Sue Bach, a total Fantastic. dark horse in this. I'm not sure exactly where we're at here. Crystal. Okay, Looks the way like they've got it scored unofficially is 114 to 112. But uh, that last shot was a nice shot. Great work under pressure here. Uh, looks like uh, you'll be in fourth place. $400 for fourth place. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Let's give her a hand, Susan Bob. And we see Sue Bach leaving the stage. She's a retiring archer at $400 for the day. And we've got Crystal advancing to face her next competitor, who is none other than, than Casey, Casey Caulfield. Caulfield. 
So Casey Koffold, I know you're a fan girl of her, a huge, 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 huge fan of Casey. Casey fan. I know you're excited to see her coming up next. And of course, Casey is Rob and Carol's daughter. We're back live here at the Spookinick Sports Complex. I'm Chuck Cooley. I'm joined by Teresa Johnson, and this is the match that I know that you've been uh, having little lollipop dreams about all weekend long. <laughs> well, I'm so excited to see Casey Coffold shoot. So let's talk about Casey. Let's give her an introduction. So obviously you hear her last name. She is the daughter of Carol and Rob Coffold. Uh, you know, the Beautiful owners. first shot. Beautiful opening. She starts with a nine. Casey is really going to be disrupting the senior women's division. The pressure is on Crystal here. I really think that's true. Because although Casey is Beautiful. shooting as a young, a very young archer, right, 13 years old in the senior division, she is holding her own. Let's see what she does here. She looks so solid this morning. She's super, super steady. She came through a really tough match through the brackets. She had to defeat Anna Rendon, 118-112, to who, put herself here who, on the by stage. By the way, is a multi-time Olympian and... Crystal pulls it off where her timing was long on that shot, but she gets it. Now look at Casey. She's super steady. She closes that eye at the end to aim. And Great opening end 10. from Casey. Great opening end. Crystal's going to respond here. Well, ooh, a strange eight. I didn't see that in her form. Must have just been off center a little bit She's when it broke. She's been throwing those arrows out to the left. Let's see what they have to say. How you doing this morning? Good. All right. Did you eat your Wheaties? No, cinnamon toast crunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, welcome back. I know that uh, this is, last year was a dream come true for you uh, to be able to shoot against McKenzie, and you've been working really hard. Um, you know, uh, I guess uh, we'll talk about your gear first shooting a Hoyt uh, formula bow in your favorite purple. You've shot so much, you have the anodizing worn off the handle section. It's getting silver, but you've got an Excel sight, uh, Bernie's Wind Dragon stabilizers, and you're shooting uh, Carbon Express Nano SST uh, arrows, which you found uh, to group the best for you. And uh, well, the arrows are back already. It looks like we're ready to go for the Second end of this match. Looks like we've got 29-29 tie. Let's give them a hand. So we are super excited to be back here and we just had a great look. We're gonna take a look and see Casey's arrows here and look at that beautiful color combination she's got going purple and gold. That's, that's unusual, but it, it's absolutely a very pretty color combination. And we're gonna see Casey open up. She's shooting first and we have a tied match at 29 all. And Casey opens with a nine. Let's see how Crystal answers. Crystal's looking pretty smooth this morning. The pressure is on her, but again, she's a good pressure shooter. She shoots a 10. Now the question is, why was she getting those left arrows earlier? We definitely were seeing some lefts. On Casey's visor, you see her Joad pins. Ooh, that, that could cost her. Looks like she may have caught the nine on that one. So at this point, Crystal's really got to keep up 10s and 11s if she wants to have a chance of beating Casey. There's it a looks 10. like she caught the 10 there. I think with any of these divisions, when we talk about recurve, you, you, you absolutely have to hold the gold. No matter what, you've got to hold the gold. Ooh. Now, Casey lets down there. I didn't see the clock, so I don't know how much time she's got on this side. She gets it off with... Ooh. Casey could be in some trouble here. She, because this is a cumulative sport. Do you think that's nerves getting sport, to her? I think her timing was off. I think. Oh, and Crystal really laid a hammer down with that 11 there. That's a really tough this arrow to come back from. This is a big deficit. Big seven-point lead there after two ends. Going into the half. See how that's going to break down. Shooting against a young lady here, and I'm sure she'll be around for a while, and so will you. What do you think of that? I think it's awesome. I was telling her earlier this week, I saw she signed up for the USAT series in the senior division, and it's great to see young ones coming up and getting to shoot with us. I'll tell you what, she's come a long ways, and so have you. Thanks. 
Uh, Crystal, you've uh, undergone an incredible transformation. You've been a world champion with a compound bow and uh, done just about everything you can with the compound uh, in, in the entire world of archery. And, um, you know, what, what has drawn you to Olympic recurves and to the Olympics? Biggest thing is just a new challenge. Wanted something new, new goals to make, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I definitely miss winning, <laughs> but a uh, uh, little bit of replay there. Crystal says she misses winning, and and the reality is winning does not come easily to her. I think that fans at home might sort of look at her very quick rise and compound, and then in recurve and say it comes easy, and it really doesn't. Crystal works for it. She really puts in the time. Uh, she, she does a lot of cross training. A, she puts in a solid effort. Yeah, I mean, she I've puts known in a Crystal. Lot of practice time. I've known her on the com on the on the compound side mm -hmm. as a competitor for years, and you know, there's there's no doubt that she puts solid solid effort in. I mean, she does have a yeah. day job and a family home, but she still puts all the hours in that she needs to put in. She's a student of the game. She understands the equipment. She knows how to build it, tune it, and shoot it. Yeah, she really does. She puts in a ton of time behind the bow, and she's very quick to encourage other women to shoot as well. She's a uh, uncharacteristic shot from her. There. That may give Casey the opening that she needs, but oh, Casey can hit an 11. That's a quick three here. point. She and gets she a three-point swing there. She's, Ooh, she's, she's got to hope for a couple more of those. A bit. We're still just over the halfway point, Chuck, so... I'm still going to say that anything can happen. Especially after the recurve matches that we watched yesterday where a couple of the last arrows were wild misses. Um, either arrows not coming all the way through the quick clicker or something along those lines where you saw archers have a huge uncharacteristic miss right at the very end and you saw Absolutely. matches swing in the opposite direction. So with recurve, it's, it's a little less predictive. A lot of movement there in Crystal's bow. You can see the stabilizer shaking. And her timing. And you a can seven. see her timing has kind of fallen off there. She's not That's getting seven. through the shot as clean now as she needs to. Now the door to. is open. She really needs a solid arrow here. Wow. Look at that. 11 10 liner there. Ties That's up the match. Back. A seven point swing and three arrows going into the last wow. set. What's That's the other? impressive. The shots are feeling a little bit smoother now, so it's all good. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, nice shooting. You're looking like you're smoothing out. <laughs> very much kicking dad to the curb there. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, a good, a good shot there. What's happening up there? Um, my first arrow, I don't know if it was string alignment, the lights, it's kind of hard to see the string, but because um, it felt like a really good shot. So just keep shooting. The lighting is tricky. Um, we try to do. Let's take a look at this shot here from Crystal. That was that miss, and you, she said string alignment, and it almost looked like the string wasn't quite back into her nose the way she normally does. Well, when she's talking about string alignment, Chuck, she's actually talking about the way she visually lines her string up against the riser of the bow. Uh, so it, it probably her anchor point was probably the same, but visually the way she was tilting her head or the way she was lining up that string with her eye, it may not have been coming to where she wanted to. And for recurve archers, we talked before about the peep sight on the compound bow. Mm -hmm. So for a recurve archer, essentially that string alignment functions as our rear sight. Uh, so it's a You're second point that of up alignment the visually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if that's not the same, what it gives you are big left and right swings. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to see what's going to happen here with Crystal. This is a, I have to tell you, Chuck, personally, this is a very tough match for me to commentate. Be okay? Because How's your Crystal, heart? Crystal's a good friend. I'm a huge Crystal fan, and I'm a huge Casey fan. And I would love to see them both walk away with the win. They're both tremendous shooters. Casey Let's gets the go. I had to be the first shooter for this end. Three arrows to go. Time match. She lets down. She's she does have time. 30 seconds on the clock, so that letdown's not going to necessarily hurt her as much. She comes back to full draw with a full 14, 15 <laughs> seconds on the clock. Gets a good okay. shot off. Good shot. And it's a center 10. And in the coach's box for Casey, she's got uh, Heather File, who is the head coach here at Lancaster Archery, Joad. Heather was. Did you see? There's a little bit of a lean to that riser there. I think she was. I think that uh, lighting thing is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Casey now with Casey another is ten. Not going to let her in. Whew. Crystal's got her work cut out for her if she wants to try to take this match. Casey's got a two-point lead. Crystal can do it. She shoots very well under pressure. And a nine. So this match, unless 
Casey really has a tragic miss here. This this match has swung unbelievably because but she Casey's wow, what a down. good letdown. So there's Big, pressure on Casey. Breath. And anything can happen in this match. I mean, for sure, we want to see both of these ladies shoot very, very well. They're evenly matched. Ooh, an eight. Now, so there's a door there. Now there's some potential. Crystal needs an 11. She could do it. Ooh. Oh, man, that was so close. So, so close. close. Oh so that'll goodness. give the win to Casey Coffold. Great and she'll be coming up next. Crystal. Fantastic. against Mackenzie Brown for our final gold match yes. of the day. We will step aside here in just a second. You had a chance to tie it up there on that last arrow, and it looks like that. Rob will get some final words there. Um, so unofficially, it looks like you'll be third place, $700. So you are getting back into winning, but now with the recurve. Yes, uh, working my way back up. Feels good. Well, congratulations. I can... I, I want to share with folks, uh, I, I know how hard you've trained in the last year and uh, you know, you, you've traveled, you've uh, sought out uh, the best coaches in the country. I know you've been starting to work with Dick quite a bit and um, let me tell you, there's, there's no one in recurve archery that has the worth it, work ethic of Crystal Govan. We wish her well. well. I'm sure we'll see you all summer up on the podium and uh, congratulations for a third place finish. Good job, Crystal. Okay, hold on. We've got a. Oh, we've got an arrow call down there that got, we've got to get uh, something to look arrow at. Final arrow call? No. Nope. nope they're getting them called. all pulled. Everything's pulled. One twelve, one eleven, and one it point. Does go to Casey Caulfield. So when we come back on the other side of this, Teresa, we're going to see a gold medal match of the weekend. Casey Caulfield will be going against Olympian. Mackenzie Brown, Her and I know idol. you're super excited yes. to see that. Yes. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We're at live at the Lancaster Archery Classic at the Win and Win Broadcast Booth. We are back. This is uh, Chuck Cooley. I'm Teresa Johnson. We are Good here morning. at the Lancaster Archery Classic Live from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We are in the True Ball Excel Archery Hall, and we have got a rivalry here, Chuck. This is, uh, this you know, this for a 9 o'clock Sunday morning, get your heart <laughs> pumping kind of day. It does not get better. Uh, don't drink your coffee just now, folks, at home, because it could get your heart rate up just a little too high. This so is who you're looking at there, Brown. Olympian Mackenzie Brown, up against Casey, Casey Caulfield. Who is shaking up the senior, let's say senior Nine. means adult, guys, just to be super clear. Casey's Here's only, what, 14 years old? 13. 13 years old, shooting against her idol, Olympian Mackenzie Brown. And she just knocked off Crystal Gauvin. Who is a former world number two compound world champion. And let's just talk about the significance of this for a minute. Here's why this matters wow. so much. Mackenzie is an Olympian. She represented the United States at Rio 2016. She was the only woman to secure an Olympic archery berth from, from the US. And Casey has long idolized Mackenzie. She's been saying for years. She's been saying for years that Mackenzie is her idol. Her dream was to one day shoot against Mackenzie. Wow. Here they are in the gold medal match. And look at that. She comes out of the gate storming out with a 10-10-9, all arrows in the center. Mackenzie with a three point deficit. Uh, color scheme with your Olympian sight that uh, uh, Excel so kindly provided for the 2016 uh, Olympic team members. Uh, biter plunger, shrewd uh, small diameter stabilizers. Uh, you're shooting the X10 arrows and uh, uh, beautiful uh, red, white, and blue. Again, everything's red, white, and blue. If somebody get a close up on her Olympic ring, that's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Look at uh, that. Let's give Mackenzie Brown, our Olympian, a hand. So 
We were just talking here in the booth about the fact that Casey, just a reminder, is the daughter of Carol and Rob Caulfold, and they are the CEO and owner of, the, of Lancaster Archery Supply. So this has to be an interesting dynamic for Casey and, and a little bit of not actually, not even let's say a little bit, a lot of added pressure. She's the hometown favorite. She is. We uh, saw there, that uh, uh, go in with yesterday. There's no better mentor for young girls and uh, ladies coming up than Mackenzie Brown. Again, let's give Mackenzie a hand. So, Chuck, you were just saying that, that Casey's the hometown favorite here. She is the hometown favorite, I think. You know, we saw this yesterday uh, with Rob and Carol's son going through the same thing, hometown favorite. As we get into the second end of this match now, these ends again. If you're watching this from the beginning, they have they shoot four end matches. Each end is three arrows. Oh, Casey, the archer down with there. the highest score wins the match. We've seen Casey let down a couple of times in her match earlier. The other thing to note, if you're watching from home and you haven't seen these ladies shoot before, Mackenzie tends to be a bit of a slow starter. She doesn't always come out of the gate really strong. She gains momentum in her matches typically, and that's where she starts mm -hmm. to pull off wins. So if Casey's going to win this one from a tactical perspective, she's got to just keep shooting her game, which is very, very good. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, there's a door that uh, Mackenzie certainly needed to get back into this match. You really don't want to give Mackenzie any room to move ahead now. I was fortunate to talk to Casey's coach, or one of her coaches, Heather File, who told me Casey trains very, very hard. She has been shooting over 200 arrows a day, which is tremendous for a kid in school. She's got the nerves a little bit there, but she lets down. She's got plenty of time on the clock, Chuck. You know, I think that's great discipline for her. She knows Beautiful. that the shot's breaking down. She lets down. She gives it another effort. Good shot. She gets she rewarded with a gold. nine. Yeah. But she's got a deficit now. But it's only a point. It's only a and point, and we're only at the halfway match, a mark of this match. Let's hear what they have to say. I really don't think of myself as old, uh, but uh, Casey makes me feel a little bit old. But Well, as she's only 13, so, and how old are you? I am 22. Casey is as, Casey is as old as my little sister, actually. So. <laughs> Case in point. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Mackenzie, how old were you when you started shooting? I was 10 years old and I started in the NAS program. That's incredible. And what got you interested in shooting Olympic recur? My dad told me I could go to the Olympics. Um, I, was <laughs> uh, I was in swimming before I was in archery and I had Olympic aspirations with swimming and I just, it was really easy to transfer that over to, to archery. Yes. Um, in in uh, the decades that I've been in archery, I've found that uh, Swimmers and gymnastics are huge uh, helps to uh, a person's archery career, especially in, uh, in the girls. Okay, we've got a very close match, 55-54 with Mackenzie, Mackenzie holding a one-point edge. So Mackenzie referenced the NAS program, and she was talking about the National Archery in the Schools program, which mm -hmm. is a nationwide uh, program, literally, where kids can learn archery as part of a phys ed class uh, and, and compete. And it's an incredible program. They've introduced millions of kids to archery nationwide. They have, and it's, it's impressive to see that we finally got somebody to the Olympics through that program after the, after the millions of people that have been involved with it. And it does, it does Mackenzie. show that gateway that they do have that opportunity to learn archery and long, progress long all the way there. through. Wow, Whew. center punched it though. You have to be, con you have to be thinking so. I with can hear the nerves in your voice. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I have always been nervous watching these archers compete. I've been watching Mackenzie compete since she was probably 14 or 15. I remember her when I was a junior dream team coach many years ago and Mackenzie mm -hmm. was on the JDT. Um, she has she is a mm. true product of USA Archery's programming. That eight opens the door for Casey. With an Let's 11, see what she, she can does. Tie this match up. Ooh, we've got a Still one point match. Still holds that one point match. Could Casey do it, Chuck? Could she finally beat her idol in her own division? So Casey, uh, I know you've been shooting all your life. Uh, what is the one thing that's your big advantage for you to be on this stage? I mean, how come you can be here at this young age? Um, because I live right next to like Starcher's Fly, and I can practice pretty much whenever. So. How about the support group you have? Um, I have my parents and a lot of friends and coaches that always help me, 
and encourage me to do new things and to go farther. And I know you have a great Joad group. Yeah, a lot of people here and a lot of friends here supporting me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You see the hear the cheering from the crowd in the background there. So we're going to just see that miss from Mackenzie. It was a little bit of a tough shot, and she made a bit of a face there. She wasn't too happy about that one. I think she felt better about the shot than where it landed. And so now we're going to see these ladies get started again here. And I want to point out the significance of Casey's age, not just because she's so much younger than everybody. Casey should, by all rights, be competing in the 12 to 14 division right now. She's decided to jump up to the adult women's group. Is that still cub division in that Cub group? division. Cub division. She, she's technically a cub, Chuck. She's jumped up to senior because she wants a shot at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic trials, which start next year. In order to do that, Casey's got to be shooting 70 meters, which is literally 20 meters further than she legally should be shooting this year. Mm -hmm. So she's really had to step it up, and that involves tremendous training. She has to shoot heavy weight for her age. Now, Still a one-point lead for McKenzie. The last archer to do that at age 13 and make that Olympic team was Denise Parker. Wow. And that was in 1988. It's a tall order, but so Casey could do it. So we have another opportunity here for Casey. Two she's arrows to go into the match. To she's got to get a 10 here. or an 11 to get ahead. Little shake. She lets down. She's still got 16 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time. Ooh. Oh, that could That's cost her the match. Probably going to cost her the match there. I don't think Mackenzie will make that kind of an error going into this last arrow. Ten. She yep. sure won't. She won't. That's a tough break for Casey, but I'll tell you what, she She's has. She's going to finish strong. She'll finish strong, and she has shot beautifully Nine. in this match. What a what tremendous a great match. accomplishment for her. Congratulations to Mackenzie Brown. Congratulations, Mackenzie. And a huge congratulations to Casey for her second place finish. She gets a big hug there. What a Beautiful. great show of sportsmanship. And uh, we'll get some words right. here from Rob as uh, last, they close this out. Last year, you, uh, you got here. You shot a tough match. And uh, Mackenzie came out on top. Uh, you gave it a, a great try. You had a, you had a shot at it there that last end. You come away with a second place, uh, $1,250. So not a bad payday. <laughs> That'll buy some shoes and other stuff, right? How yep. you feeling? Okay. Not, I wish I could have done a little bit better, but that's all right. Okay. Okay, hon. Uh, Give her a you. big hug, Dad. Thank Come you. on. Give her a big hug. She did great. <laughs> we'll take a look at these couple final shots here from Casey. You can see her shaking her head there. She was process. just so disappointed. Well, excellent. Let's give Mackenzie Brown a hand. $2,500. $2,500 for first place in the LAS Classic. Congratulations to Mackenzie Brown there on what a great finish. And to Casey, are you okay, Teresa? I'm okay. I'll make it. <laughs> She's such a big fan of the girls here. Coming up next is Teresa's probably favorite match of the day. We have men's recurve coming up. We are live here at the Lancaster Archery Classic at the True Ball XL Archery Hall. Spooky Nook Sports Complex. Chuck Cooley and Teresa Johnson in the win and win archery booth. <laughs> 